It's estimated that 90% of the world's largest cities, housing nearly 50% of the world's population, are located on the ocean's coasts. These areas, which are dangerously vulnerable to volatile weather and rising sea levels, are subject to such a real and present danger that the UN estimates that by 2050, nearly 200 million people per year will be displaced by rising sea levels. So how will we deal with such a huge amount of displaced humans? What would you do? Join us today as we explore the recently announced floating city of Oceanics, Busan, South Korea, whose sole purpose will be to address the world's rising sea levels and provide real, tangible options for human habitation in the event sea levels continue to rise. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and click the bell icon if you like our content. Now, let's get right into it. Rising sea levels are set to cost countries and municipalities billions of dollars over the coming decades. Texas just recently invested $11.6 billion into a storm surge protection system. New York City has forecast that it will spend nearly $15 billion on its coastal defense plan. Indonesia has announced a $34 billion plan to move its entire capital city of Jakarta, a 30 million resident sinking capital, to higher ground. One potential solution to such extreme measures, floating cities. Philosophers and authors have long fantasized about mystical artificial islands and metropolises on the water for centuries. And why this fascination? For the longest time, you could have easily chalked it up to over-adventurous human imagination. However, the idea of floating cities is now less about imagination and adventure and more about necessity and desperation. Floating cities aren't a new proposition. Over the last century, we've seen many iterations of floating cities designed or built around the world. The floating Euros Islands on Lake Titicaca, the nearly built floating Triton City in Tokyo Bay, the stilted community of Makoko in Lagos, Nigeria. Humans have sensed for nearly a century that our future might require a move to the water. Enter Oceanics. In 2019, a group of builders, engineers, MIT scientists, and architects gathered at the United Nations for what was termed the first roundtable to sustainable floating cities. It was at this roundtable that the group discussed an audacious idea, sustainable, repeatable floating cities to remedy the challenges faced in coastal urban areas by continuously rising sea levels. One of the key outcomes of this 2019 roundtable was to build a prototype sustainable floating city in collaboration with a host government. The problem? There was no host government currently raising its hand in 2019 to build this prototype city. Enter the second UN roundtable on sustainable floating cities in April 2022, where it was revealed that a host government had finally stepped forward. The city? Busan, South Korea. South Korea's second largest city with a population of over 3.4 million people. Busan is regularly at risk of typhoon flooding. In fact, over the course of the last several years, many of these floods have even been deadly. With a total population of nearly 3.5 million people and one of the world's busiest ports, local builders and engineers are well-versed in waterfront construction and flood mitigation strategies. The Busan project is meant to be a model for future floating cities all over the world. Busan's floating city will at first be comprised of three interconnected hexagonal platforms totaling 15.5 acres. The three platforms will initially house 12,000 people with the capacity to eventually modify its modular blueprint to accommodate a population of 100,000. The city will be powered entirely by net zero energy with affordable, abundant, and clean renewable energy from solar, wind, sea, and waves. Floating and rooftop solar panels will generate much of the city's operating electricity. Each platform will be built of a material called BioRock, which developers claim is buoyant and harder than concrete. The material, which will be anchored to the seabed, is created by using conductive materials such as steel and then exposing underwater minerals to an electric current. The structure around the steel eventually turns white as limestone minerals that are naturally dissolved in seawater grow over the surface of the steel, producing a constantly growing hard rock coating. It strengthens over time and can even repair itself in the presence of the current, allowing it to withstand harsh weather conditions. Additionally, the city will rely on something it's calling freshwater autonomy, 
where fresh water will be supplied via the latest in water harvesting, filtering, and distillation systems. Each platform will treat and refill its own water, minimize and recycle waste, and include food-growing greenhouse urban farm areas. Each of the platforms will serve a distinct purpose, one for living, one for research, and one for lodging. And the link span bridges that connect them to the land will form a protected lagoon with ample space for water recreation. The residential platform will be equipped with eco-lodging guest rooms, organic dining, communal terraces, and skylit greenhouse amenities. The living platform will be where full-time residents live and gather. The research platform will act as a co-working and maritime research hub equipped with a temperature-controlled garden space and hydroponic towers that will grow the city's food. UN Habitat will collect data from Busan's floating city and hope to use it for additional cities around the world. In fact, Oceanics is in talks with at least 10 other governments about building additional floating cities. With coastal cities especially vulnerable to climate-related hazards, there are nearly 800 million people who will be quickly faced with unique demographic, environmental, economic, social, and geographic challenges related to rising sea levels. With nowhere to go, rapid urban population growth has pushed people closer to the water, driving up housing costs to prohibitive levels and pushed out the poorest families. And although floating cities appear to be something out of a science fiction novel, humanity may need them to pay off, and quickly. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new to the channel so that you get notified when we upload more content. We'll see you guys in the next one.